Hello there. This episode is going to be about Mac. Mac is my 1974 hot rod project, and it's really about to go into phase two. It's been running now for over a year, a couple thousand miles, and I'm about to put a 3.2 liter engine in it. And before I do though, I have to get the oiling system set up. And this is the front RS cooler by CSF. It's really well made. It's gonna go right here in this hole. It's gonna get more direct air to just cool that bigger 3.2 engine. Hope it fits. Some people don't like the RS bumper. They think it looks kind of like an afterthought. Um, I really chose it because of the performance. Um, getting the oil cooler out in the Airstream is really important. It's kind of racy. The real RS also had the ducktail in the back. You can see the bumper's a little dirty. Um, I haven't cleaned it in a while. I've been driving this car quite a bit, you guys. Um, you can see there's a rock chip right there. One rock chip, um, there's another one right there, and another one, and this is the last thing I painted. Luckily, I don't really have any rock chips up on the hood yet. If you're new to this project, or if you haven't seen a video on, the, on uh, Mac in a while, this car has what I call kind of three phases. Phase one is pretty much complete. I was able to get this car on the road for a very low cost, 12,500, including the price of the car. Phase two is to do some more modifications to the drivetrain. So like I just mentioned, 3.2 liter engine in its sort of stock form. Gonna be adding some suspension components like sway bars, coilovers, uh, brakes are already actually phase two items, the, the um, CNC caliper brakes. But we're just gonna continue to up the performance of this car and just drive the heck out of it and really enjoy it for the higher performance. Phase three, if you're wondering, just bumps up the horsepower even more. I wanna do some modifications to the 3.2, potentially go as high as 3.5 liters and uh, a lot of mods to the cams and the pistons and the crank and all kinds of stuff. So that's um, probably closer to the 300 horsepower range, guys. So that's why we need the bigger oil cooler and potentially another oil cooler in the fender too. As I said, this cooler is from CSF. This is model number 8201. This is specific for the bumper that I have on an early car. And it is a dual pass, high quality aluminum cooler. So I got mounting holes on top, mounting holes on bottom, mounting holes on, on both sides. So mounting it should be uh, pretty easy. I'm gonna have to make some custom brackets, obviously. And then the inputs and outputs are here, 22 millimeter by 1.5 thread. So we'll probably go with dash 16 lines. These are really nice large openings. This is not gonna restrict oil flow at all. Um, being a dry sump system, there's a huge reservoir of oil in the rear fender. So this is on the path going back to the oil tank. So the oil is nice and cool before it goes in the engine. Yeah, it doesn't seem like I can just snake it in there. I'm just gonna pull the bumper off and I'm gonna be pulling it on and off multiple times, I'm sure, just to get this thing uh, mounted and, and fit. One thing that I can see right away is the outlets going directly to the rear of the car are gonna have to take a pretty quick 90 degree turn so we can get oil lines, uh, probably flexible lines, up to the hard lines that run by the, by the, uh, by the fender here. This bumper is attached in many places along the sides and in the front.
Bumper's off now. You can see these are studs that hang down. They're actually welded to the fenders. A little different than the factory does it, but none of this is factory anyways. This whole latch panel is from a 74, but you can see where I've taken a giant chunk out of it. That's so the air can go through the cooler and down under the car. These are the mounts that attach the bumper, more studs. They continue all the way back there to the tire practically. Um, I did take the liberty to touch up some of the yellow. Um, I just brushed on a little bit of black. It dried overnight. So now we're ready to test fit the oil cooler. I like to use strings. When I'm just working by myself, I use a lot of strings. And then on the oil cooler, I just, I just bolted up some little, little tabs, like little, little tabs with holes in them. So I can suspend it there on the strings or make it so the strings don't slide off. So that's what I'm gonna use to kind of hold it in position. Almost better than having a helper sometimes. Cause these don't, these don't argue with me. So let's put the bumper back on and then we'll, we'll just sort of get a baseline um, location of this thing. Clearly we have to make room for these fittings and they're gonna get pretty close to this corner. So we just need to find out where it needs to be. I'd like it to be out here. Um, so we have plenty of room for fittings, but until we get the bumper on, we just don't know. I also started blacking out the inside of the bumper, but I kind of ran out of paint. Um, come back to this. I'm just brushing this stuff on. It's my typical Rust-Oleum mix, but uh, it's just, just going to protect the fiberglass a little bit more and just make it look tidier underneath. The bumper's in place, pretty rough, but it's in place. I, I can shift it up and down with the, with the nuts, but they're uh, nylock nuts. It takes a little while to thread it up, but basically just looking at the oil cooler now, you know, it's floating there on the strings, but well, actually that's about as far forward as it goes. I have to shift it over to one side, but I think that right there should actually work. And it's gonna be maybe a hard line coming over and then this one can go behind it. Here's another look at it from the front with it pushed all the way up to the face. I'm gonna have to have it all the way up just in order to, to make it fit behind with the plumbing. So it's gonna be shifted to the, to the right or the driver's side. And then this part here is as close as I can get it. I could trim right here and make it a little bit closer, which I will probably do. Imagine if there was no cutout, this wall would continue straight down all the way to this surface. So the only airflow you would get would be in the bottom like two rows or maybe three rows because this would be completely cut off. So the only way to make these front coolers work is to create this cavity behind. And I'll show you from the inside in a second. But this cavity that I created is big enough because it doesn't obscure any of the rows and it allows the air to make a generous turn going down. Okay, custom work means pulling this on and off multiple times. This is pretty much its position. It needs to be right about there. I got these two tape marks lined up and I know there's about a half an inch from this edge to the top of the oil cooler. I just basically need to make a bracket that goes from here to here. It doesn't look like it's gonna be that tricky of a bracket. It's the cardboard template trick. Just about like that. And then depending on the size of the spacer, I can move the cooler forward. Like I talked about maybe clearancing the fiberglass a little bit to bring it as far forward as possible. And this is where not wearing gloves kind of comes in handy because the, the more dirty your hands are, the easier it is to mark these holes.
Okay, I'm gonna line this up best I can close to the car and I'm just gonna transfer these hole locations to the car. So this is called the transfer punch. Basically just goes from one hole to the next. And I think, oh, I think that's right there. I think I might do one hole at a time because once I get this one done, I can put a bolt in it and then do the other side just to make sure it doesn't move because you really only get one chance with the rib nuts. You can't move a rib nut. Seems like I should put it in this way, but I'm gonna try to put it in from the reverse. Um, that's because I need to have a spacer here anyways, and I think it's just gonna be a cleaner look on the inside, which you'll never see the outside, so I'm gonna try this. That's kind of the finished side, so that's what I'm after on the inside. The outside doesn't look bad either, but that's what you see on this side. So now, when this comes together, it's going to, well, I'm gonna use a big donut, big donut spacer, to get a big footprint on this, because there's only one bolt attaching it, and the bigger the footprint, the less likely it is to rotate. So you see how the donut fits over the riv nut, and then we'll just, you know, get a bolt, a washer, and get the washer ready. Now it's possible to use bigger donuts to change the spacing. This this one's pretty aggressive. It's pr it's out pretty far. So if we can't get the the bumper to fit on, then we'll just go to a a little shorter donut there. That's pretty good right there. Hold it tight. Whack it. Let's put a tiny bit of anti-seize on this, mostly because the hole that I drilled is not protected. And so this anti-seize will kind of prevent it from corroding. Cool, right? And there we have it, that's the cooler mounted. It's actually, you know, pretty firm. I can kind of yank on it. I mean, that's gonna vibrate, so you don't really want it to vibrate like that. And this is just a real quick refresher what that scoop looks like from the inside. Definitely have some debris to vacuum out of there and a little bit of leaves and dust and stuff. But if you guys remember, this is the car that has seam welding all along the front. Every one inch or so, seam welds everywhere. Remember the days when we were doing all kinds of welding, adding strengthening plates to the top, putting in these extra tabs there for the strut brace and doing all kinds of work. Um, fuel tank is completely modified. The fuel pump is down inside the tank, special filler. Sender is uh, stock, but it has a surge tank inside there to prevent weird uh, suction issues when cornering. So this is a pretty modified car, you guys. Well, I think what I wanna do is see how this strap is here. That was just there for my strings. But the same three holes are on the bottom as it is the top. And I think what we should do is just basically brace it from here to here. Basically, we want a way to prevent air from just flowing around the cooler we got to kind of block these edges off. So I'm wondering if this bracket here could also maybe support some foam in this region because the air gets pressurized as you're driving and it doesn't want to flow through the oil cooler. It would rather just flow over the top. There's no battery here.
Yeah, I just found this strap of aluminum actually, and it's, it's pretty thin. It's like, uh, I don't know, 050 probably. And it's really strengthened this, this oil cooler. Now you can, you can whack it and, it, and even though it's a thin piece, it really strengthens it. And I'm probably not gonna put one on the other side because it's not necessary. Even if I whack this, it doesn't vibrate very much. The deflections are like way down. So that's how it's gonna be. Um, just gonna, you know, test fit the, uh, the cover or the, the outer bumper. And I may have to put this one through the bottom of the bumper, I'm not sure but let's get it on here and see what happens. All right guys, the bumper cover is on and it fits pretty well. Um, a couple adjustments needed on the oil cooler. Let me show you. So it is touching right here, which like I said before, I think I just need to trim the fiberglass to bring it you know, this way just a little bit or it's possible that I can change the donuts from one side to the other, because one was slightly thicker than the other one. So that's an interference right there. Also, the whole thing looks like that bolt is touching right there, the one that holds that strap. So probably better to just put the bolt through the bottom. Um, if you notice that little circle there, um, that's the original color of the bumper, by the way. So this side of the cooler, just needs to go up a little bit. And if you look really carefully, the rows are sort of going downhill. So it's just gonna require a little bit of adjustments. All the holes are a little bit big. So loosen the bolts, maybe slot the holes and just kind of straighten it out. So if you look straight on, it's just a little bit crooked, but not bad. And then, like I said before, the whole thing with air bypass is pretty important. So it's pretty well closed out. There's a little bit of a hole right there. We can stuff some, some foam weather stripping down there in the bottom and then some foam around the top. But this doesn't need much because it really does fit the opening in the bumper pretty well. So really happy with this, guys. So far, so good. Next episode will be with the plumbing, how to get the plumbing all the way back to the engine. All right, another, another look from inside here. You can see there's a little bit bigger gap on this side than that side. Not much, so I just have to you know push that side up a little bit. But you can see the access there to the, the plumbing is actually not that bad. So I, I think we're going to be in good shape. Those lines will probably have to come, you know, out, around, and then over maybe. Not sure exactly how to route it yet. This one here is, is pretty straightforward, just an L. Thanks again, guys, for being here. This was another productive day in getting this car in its real 911 form. So really happy about that. Hopefully we'll get the 3.2 liter engine running on the test stand soon. We already did that with Benji's car. We're going to do it with this car too. Uh, so thank you for being here. Don't forget there is a uh, Monday Ask Me Anything Patreon call. Patreon members dial into the Zoom meeting and we just talk about uh, your car, whatever else is going on. So hope to see you there. Have a good weekend. Cheers.